rotating cylinder viscometer. It is desired to measure the coefficient of viscosity eta of air at room temperature since this parameter is essential for determining the electronic charge by Millikan's oil drop experiment. It is proposed to perform the measurement in a viscometer consisting of a stationary inner cylinder of radius capital R and length capital L, so this is the inner cylinder, supported by a torsion fiber and of an outer cylinder of slightly larger inner radius capital R plus delta. Capital R plus delta is the radius of the outer cylinder rotating slowly with angular velocity omega. So this is rotating slowly with angular velocity omega. The narrow annular region of thickness delta, that is this region here in between, uh, where delta is much less than capital R, is filled with air and one measures the torque G on the inner cylinder. Part A, find the torque G in terms of the viscosity of air and the parameters of this experimental apparatus. Now, if I call P sub theta the tangential force per unit area, which is the tangential pressure, tangential force per unit area, then I can see that the tangential force will be related to the tangential pressure as P theta, the tangential pressure, multiplied by the surface area, which is 2 pi capital R times L. That is the surface area of the inner cylinder. So that is basically 2 pi R, the circumference, multiplied by the length. This gives us the surface area of the cylinder that is in contact with the air molecules. Now the torque G is R cross with F, so it's R cross the tangential force F sub theta and here you can see that the tangential force, because by definition it's tangential, it's perpendicular to the R vector where R, the radial vector, is capital R in R hat direction. So it's basically radially outward. So if we calculate the torque, G, magnitude, it's going to be the force P sub theta multiplied with 2 pi RL, uh, and then I have capital R, R hat, so it's going to be 2 pi capital R square times L. Now, the tangential pressure P of theta, P sub theta, is minus the viscosity of the air multiplied by the gradient in the velocity of the air molecules, del u theta del r, where u sub theta is the tangential speed uh, such that using the boundary conditions in the problem here, this tangential speed at r is equal to capital R, the surface of the inner cylinder, is zero because the inner cylinder is stationary but the outer cylinder is moving uh, with an angular speed omega and it has a radius capital R plus delta uh, and that tangential speed is the angular speed omega multiplied by the radius of the outer cylinder. 
So we can see that the gradient of the tangential speed with respect to the radius is uh, equal to, we have at r is equal to uh, capital R, 0, at r is equal to capital R plus delta, we have omega r plus delta divided by the change in the radius delta. So this is basically minus omega times capital R divided by delta for capital R much greater than uh, delta. So we have this approximation that capital R is much greater than uh, delta. So we obtain uh, P sub theta is equal to, approximately equal to, uh, the viscosity omega times capital R divided by delta. Um, now you can see, if we substitute this result uh, for um, P sub theta here into the torque equation, we obtain the torque G is equal to 2 eta multiplied by pi omega capital R cube L divided by delta. All right. Now, part B, to determine what quartz fiber is needed, estimate the magnitude of the viscosity of air from first principles and use this result to estimate the magnitude of the torque that has to be measured in an apparatus of this kind. Take as dimensions capital R 2 cm, delta 0.1 cm, capital L 15 cm and omega is 2 pi radians per second. Now, when capital R is 2 centimeters, which is 2 times 10 to minus 2 meters, L is 15 centimeters, which is 15 times 10 to minus 2 meters, delta 0.1 centimeters, which is 0 0.1 times 10 to minus 2 meters and omega is 2 pi radians per second. The viscosity of the air is uh, approximately 1 over square root 6 uh, square root mkt square root mkt of over sigma and we know that air is consisting mostly of nitrogen. It's actually 70% nitrogen. So we can use nitrogen viscosity, which we have estimated to be five times 10 to minus four grams per centimeter per second for air and the viscosity of air now has an approximate value 5 times 10 to minus 4 grams is 10 to minus 3 kilograms centimeters is 10 to minus 2 uh, meters 10 to minus 2 meters second so we obtain 5 times um, 10 to minus 5 kilograms per meter second, which is 5 times 10 to minus 5 poids. All right. And if we substitute this into our torque equation, G is equal to 2 eta, 2 times 5, 10 to minus 5. Then we have um, pi omega r cube L pi 
omega is 2 pi then we have um, capital R cube which is 2 times 10 to minus 2 cube multiplied by L 15 times 10 to minus 2 divided by delta 0 0.1 times 10 to minus 2 we obtain a torque magnitude 2.4 Newton meters all right so uh, we're talking about a rotating cylinder viscometer the inner cylinder is stationary outer cylinder is uh, rotating with angular uh, velocity omega the space in between these two cylinders is filled with air and there is a thickness delta the inner cylinder has radius capital r and length l so in order to calculate the torque uh, I consider the tangential pressure that is exerted on the air molecules due to this setup and it's the tangential force per unit area that's the pressure and if you have a tangential force per unit area P sub theta multiplied by the surface area of the cylinder in contact with the air molecules is this is going to be 2 pi r the circumference multiplied by L and because the tangential force and the radial vector are perpendicular to each other, R cross F is basically going to be capital R R hat cross pro product with uh, P of P sub theta 2 pi R L theta hat. So um, we will have a torque uh, magnitude, which is P sub theta 2 pi R L multiplied with capital R. And the tangential pressure is related to the gradient of the velocity uh, del u theta del r uh, with a, a coefficient of viscosity eta and a minus sign here. Uh, the tangential speed is zero at r is equal to capital R and it is equal to omega times r plus capital uh, delta, uh, capital R plus delta uh, for the outer surface uh, so we have a uh, del u theta del r uh, is equal to at r is equal to capital r we have uh, zero so you can see that uh, the outer cylinder is rotating so we have minus omega r plus uh, delta divided by delta this is minus omega r over delta if you neglect this delta uh, dependence uh, so we can see that uh, the uh, so don't worry about this uh, minus sign here normally obviously you would do this omega r plus delta minus zero over delta so what I'm doing here is basically in uh, absolute value let's say and then I obtain omega r over delta for del u theta del r uh, I know that eta has to be positive and this is just going to give me the direction of the torque which is opposing the uh, rotation, uh, the sense of rotation of the uh, outer cylinder but uh, nevertheless we can take the, the absolute value. So we, with that we obtain for the magnitude of the pressure uh, because that, that's the only thing that I'm considering here eta times omega r over delta and for the magnitude of the torque I have uh, 2 eta uh, pi omega r cube l divided by delta so that's the answer to part a now uh, for the numerical estimation to determine what quartz fiber is needed uh, we use an approximate viscosity for air, uh, 1 over square root 6 square root mkt over sigma. This comes from our uh, estimation uh, using uh, eta is equal to actually 1 over 3 nv bar ml. And so for L, we substitute 1 over square root 2 n sigma. And for v bar, we estimate uh, square root 3 kt over 
m we estimated to be equal to the rms speed of the air molecules and we're considering that air is mostly nitrogen so we use the values for nitrogen so this calculation was done in the lecture and we found the viscosity of nitrogen to be uh, 5 times 10 to minus 5 pause so if we substitute that viscosity here into g expression and then we have uh, 2 pi uh, multiplied with omega where omega is 2 pi radians per second so we have uh, 2 eta pi 2 pi and then we have omega uh, r cube l so 2 times 10 to minus 2 meters cube l 15 times 10 to minus 2 divided by delta 0 0.1 10 to minus 2 we obtain a torque magnitude of 2.4 newton meters